Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Welcome to this Sabbath chat. My name is Sheila Rollins and I am the founder of Shula Ministries Entertainment and Associates Inc. And on this YouTube, we are the pursuit to Christ. And so, you know, recently we started doing all the videos together. Whereas before I used to do a, a video on Tuesday, uh, which I called, um, Terrific Tuesdays. And then I would do one on Thursday, with my, which I call Tactful Thursday. And basically, I would give a little piece of a song. I would have something in the description, you know, um, basically explaining what my heart was when I, you know, when I sang those songs. And so today, I am, as I have been the last few weeks, doing it all together again. Um, Terrific Tuesday, Tactful Thursday, and also the Sabbath chat, okay? Please try to stay along with us because I have some information that I want you to give. Well, actually, an invitation that I want to give, actually, two. One, to come to Christ just as you are. And two, I'm speaking today um, at, uh, it's called, it's Atlantic City Boardwalk Fellowship Church. And so that's going to be about 12 o'clock. Um, all the information that you need will be in the description. And also, if you miss me speaking or the Lord speaking through me, then you can pick up the replay. And all that information, again, will be in the description, which is the arrow next to the title. And so if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe, all right, because... You know, the Lord is blessing us to do a lot. You know, some people are giving their life to the Lord um, for the first time. You know, some people are returning. Some people that walked away are coming back, you know. So um, stay with us. I don't know what category you fall in, but the Bible says that it is the God, God's will to give us the kingdom. And so in order for us to get the kingdom, um, we must accept it. And accept it that we must pray pray and also we enter into a relationship with God where there is a lot of unlearning and learning unlearning the ways of the world you know idolatry some things maybe that parents taught us or caregivers taught us that were not aligned with the word of God I mean I realize that some parents um, maybe have fallen into some particular sins and feel that they're not worthy to tell us the ways of God. However, the Bible says to train up a child in the way that they should go. It doesn't say train them up based on what you did or what you didn't do as a parent or a caregiver, but to train them up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. And so basically, it takes a lot of power. It takes a lot of strength. It takes a lot of courage um, and holy boldness for us to accept Christ, live out the life that he wants us to out loud, and also to be able to encourage others, okay, and to stand in the truth that the Lord has brought us into. And so basically what comes to mind is a song that actually that I had given my life to the Lord on you know i mean i probably at this point i probably had a lot of um promptings to give my lord give my life to the lord but however one day at visiting a church um and they sang this song and as a result i gave my life to the lord was it smooth and sailing no did i backtrack sometimes yes was i perfect no okay but i'm still here the Bible says that we learn obedience by the things that we suffered. Every time I backtracked, I suffered. And I received a reminder in why I gave my life to the Lord. So I'm telling you, do not be discouraged in the place that you find yourself in today. God can use everything. Behind every experience, there is a comma. And God wants to put the period behind our earthly experience while preparing us to live with him forever in heaven. So let me get started with the song. I'm just going to go right into the two verses. Just know that the first verse, the first verse is for Terrific Tuesday. And the second one is for Tactful 
Thursday. So, okay, so here I go. Now, don't make fun of how I sing, okay, because I'm having, still having a little problem with my head and, you know, all this part of me up here. And they don't really know why. Just pray for me. But anyhow, I'm going to sing this song because I don't have no shame. I love the Lord and I'm willing to look like a fool for the Lord. So, okay. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou biddest me he come to Remember, there's a war going on for your soul. Don't be fooled. Jesus is the only name given among men whereby we can be saved. Choosing before it's too late. Now, I have a question for you. And that question is, if Christ were to come today, where would you spend eternity? Okay, where would you spend eternity? eternity will you be among those that are hiding their face and running to the rocks in fear of god or would you be waiting eagerly waiting for him with your hands stretched wide open you know to maybe embrace him to give him a good hug you know because you you you're aware of what's taking place in this life, you know, and you've been waiting for him, you know, you've given your heart, your mind, your body, and your soul, you constantly, you pop, basically sold out for Christ, and you're waiting for him, which group of people would you find yourself in, you know, and however, if you have not made a decision for Christ, today is the day, because when I tell you that this is the life, this is the life. Now, I can tell you that because I have passed through anxiety. I have passed through depression. I have passed through being um, marginalized, ostracized, um, gossiped about, talked about, you know, uh, abused. I have passed through all those things. I have even passed through homicidal ideation and also suicidal ideation. And I'm telling you, the life that God has given me in response to answering his call, you know, to accept him as my, not just my savior, but as my Lord. The life that I am living today is a life. I would not tr tr um, trade it for anything. And as a matter of fact, everything that you experience and where you are in your life, no surprise to God. You know, whatever your situation is and why you choose not to give yourself to Christ, not to go to church and to be separate from him. He knows all about it. And guess what? He needs that in his in his kingdom, especially because there's a comma behind all of that. And so basically what you haven't experienced, if you haven't given your life to the Lord, is how God is going to recreate your story. And as he recreates your story, he's going to put a period, possibly an exclamation part, point behind it. As a matter of fact, you know, sometimes on Facebook, when somebody makes a comment, you see a lady that comes out and she has a microphone that's kind of dangling in the air. And she's like, and so basically it's like dropping the mic, you know? And so seriously, when I tell you, this is the light, this is the light. And so possibly this YouTube, The Pursuit of Christ, is all about those that are suffering and basically don't want nothing to do with Christ because of somebody else's behavior. You know, perhaps it was an elder, first lady, you know, a church member that caused you to not want to be anything for Christ, you know, not want to have no parts with Christ. You know, perhaps it was... You know, your own parents, maybe they took you to church too much, you know, and you thought that you was bad. Because for me, when people start inviting me to church a lot, I'm saying, so what, you think I'm bad? 
you know, that I'm naughty, that I need to be in church all this time. And so basically, when you haven't, or if you haven't had a parent that was in church, like I had, like my father did not go to church and my mother did. And somehow all that churchiness can make you feel like not only are you separate from the world, but you separated from an absent parent, you know, that don't have anything to do with church. But whatever the case is, you know, whatever the reason is, today I'm asking you to accept Christ in a place of those days and watch him make your life so much better. Watch him reveal to you basically how you were duped. And so basically dupe meaning trick. You know, um, to believe in that the life that you live in, you're okay. You know, where he's trying to, like the Bible says, to steal from us, you know, to destroy us and to kill us. But Christ has come that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. And this life that is in Christ that he had because he depended on his father. Now, when Christ came, everything, every wrong thing, every sin, potential sin was all on him. And even though he was sinless, okay, at the cross, when he cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now, I don't know why a person would want to be accepted, want to be separated from God. And not have the abundant life or even the opportunity to forfeit the opportunity to go to heaven with him. To live on this earth in peace. Why would somebody not want that? Want that? And in my mind, the only reason why I can think of that is because of wrong perception. Like in somehow or another, we've been be bewitched. Somehow or another, we've been duped in the process, which today is what the Lord has blessed, what my sermon is going, about, uh, is going to be about. And that is duped when life goes awry. And so basically, I'm bidding you, I'm bidding myself in every part of our being to come home. And so basically, I talk about the story about the prodigal son, and I believe it's in Luke 15, chapter verses 11 to 32. I think that's where it is. You can check that out. And so basically, the prodigal son had to come to terms to where he was in the pig's pen, about to lose his soul, wasted his uh, birthright. And so basically, our birthright is a life that lives in Christ. Our birthright is the life that lives with God, okay? So let us not be fooled. Let us not be confused, but do come. Come to the Lord, you know? I mean, as you come, whatever it is that you, reason why you, you, you haven't come yet or has come and turned away, you know, it could be for church members, whatever. They're not Christ. They're not our example. We in this together. We all got something that we're dealing with, you know. And so I've asked the Lord to help me to, to love, not just others, but myself, you know, and to love him with all my heart, mind, body, and soul. And so basically, as I pour into you, I'm praying that you will accept it that you will accept it, that you would no longer be duped by the confusion of to think that this world is all it is. And when you die, you die. And that's all. But no, the Bible says that when Christ comes, every eye will see him, even the ones that pierce him in the side. Everybody that's in the grave is going to be awakened. Everybody ain't going to get up there. The only ones that's going to get up is those that are in Righteous. Now the Bible says this, and this is found. This is found in First Thessalonians. I'm sorry, First Corinthians, the sixth chapter, starting with, starting with verse nine, and it says, and I want to read this from the Word because I I want you to accept it as a word and not from from me. It says, "Know ye not that the unrighteous shall in not." 
inherit the kingdom of God. Now, when you speak of unrighteous, God has a bunch of commandments, 10, and a lot more that he expects for us to allow him to do in us. And I purposely said that because it's just a mirror. The Ten Commandments is just a mirror. It tells us what when we are out of sync with God. And so if you do over any of those things, then you know that you're worshiping another God. You're bowing down to another God. And this God that you're with is not the true God. Okay? Uh, it says, be not deceived, neither fornicator. These are people that have sex and not married. Nor idolaters. Those that even though that we may be... um following a parent our parents are human fallible fallible and so the only person that we should follow and like the bible says christ is the only one that has the esteem for god that says this is my beloved soul son and who i am well pleased so basically he's saying this is who I want you to follow. So we're not to follow our parents. So our parents may have brought us into sex, drugs, you know, getting high alcohol, whatever it is, womanizing, manizing, whatever it is. You know, our parents may have brought us to a position where we don't even want to go to church. But let me tell you something here. As a Christian, we must go to church. We must because Christ did. And as his followers, we must go on the day that he went. And the Bible says to remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. Six days shall I labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Now, if I said Sunday, a lot of people would say amen. But the Bible separates this clearly in Matthew 28, 1, where it talks about the Sabbath basically had already passed. And early, the first day of the week, Jesus rose from the dead. Now, that's clear in the Bible, the difference between what God calls the Sabbath and what he calls Sunday. And so basically, we can be following tradition through worshiping and honoring man. But the Bible says that we would rather obey God than to obey, obey men. So we got to put aside idolatry. And then it says adultery. You marry. Even when we marry to Christ. And we go sleeping around with somebody that's not our spouse. Spiritually, we're married to Christ. The Bible said that Christ is married to the backslider. The backslider is that you, you may have taken the name of Christianity. But you don't live it. In other words, you want to dress the way you want to dress, wear what you want to wear, eat what you want to eat, go where you want to go, but you just want to be called by his name. Not a Christian. Not a Christian. And it may be you and why a lot of people don't want nothing to do with Christianity. Okay? And so I'm telling you that we don't have to be duped. And if we were ever duped, we don't have to now. And our life does not have to go awry. We can come home. We can come home to Christ. You know, he's waiting for us. You know, as the prodigal son's father was looking for him and waiting for his son. He'd come out time to time looking for his son. God is waiting on us. And he's looking for us. He's looking for me. And he's looking for you in certain areas that we may not have surrendered. Let us surrender those things. Let us let go and let God. You won't be sorry. This is one thing that I can promise you about. And let me say this about the Sabbath. It's not an area where God is not clear of the day of worship. And it's the only commandment that he says, to remember. Why he say that? Because he know that we would live in a time of deception and that basically there would be some discrepancy about the Sabbath. But he's clear in his word. He says, it's the seventh day. You know, it's a sign between him and his people. And not only do he want us to worship on the seventh day today on this earth, the Bible says in Isaiah 66, 22 and 23, that in the new heavens and the new earth, all from one, from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, we will all come 
to worship God. If it's going to be a day of worship in a new heaven and new earth, it's a day of worship now. You know, so let us not be confused. Let us let go of tradition and idolatry. And the Bible says also the effeminate. Now I had to look up that big word. You know, I'm not really used to big words. I had to look it up. And right here in my Bible, it says the definition for effeminate. It says perverts and homosexuals. Now we can come to Christ, like the song says, just as I am. We can come just as we are. But however, it's going to be a ride. Get in, get in, put your seatbelts on. It's going to be a ride. And the thing that I like about God, he don't give it to us at one time, little by little. Because underneath of some of the things that we do is trauma. You know, sexual abuse, verbal abuse, physical abuse, whatever it is, you know, threatening, you know, that has caused us to be separated from God. But whatever the situation, I am bidding you to come home. Come home. Okay, and so also it says, and those that abuse themselves with mankind. Now, I'm thinking that that is a person that is looking to man for their self-esteem and is willing to pay for it. In other words, giving sex, allowing somebody to abuse them and stand with them because they have no self-esteem. And that they're too afraid to build on Christ and what Christ has in them. And so therefore they hide and they shrink from who they are behind a, 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 a man, you know, whether it's a man or a woman. And then it says, nor the thieves. Now we're talking about what the Bible says, the unrighteous is not inheriting the kingdom of heaven. Now, nor thieves, nor covetous, you know, people that you don't want to go out and get it yourself. You know, you don't want God to help you to get it. You want somebody else's, okay? And then it says the drunkard. Now, a lot of times when we think of drunkard, we think of alcohol and we think of like substances. If you don't have the right perception of who you are, it could be that you drink, you think more of yourself than what you are. And possibly you can think less of yourself than what you are. But let me tell you something. When I look at the cross, it raises my self-esteem because the Lord saw that not only what I needed, not only what I wanted, he saw what I deserved. And this was the highest amount of love that he gave himself for his friends. He gave himself for me and he gave himself for you. You know, so if that does not lift your self-esteem, you know, a new pair of Gucci boots won't do it. You know, Michael Kors pocketbook ain't going to do it. You know, Michael Kors dress or whatever it is, Louis Vuitton or whatever. No, that's not going to do it. That's going to put some money in somebody else's pocket, but it's not going to really raise your self-esteem and keep it. It is only what we do for Christ or what we do for God. It's going to last, y'all. It's going to take us right out of this world into the kingdom, no matter what happens. Now, the Bible says those that would live godly will suffer persecution, okay? But in suffering persecution, the Bible says that he that endures till the end shall be saved. Now, Jesus is an example to that. Look at what they did to Jesus in this earth. And where is he? The Bible says that he sits on the right hand of the Father in glory, Okay, so let us not be duped. Let not our lives be go awry, but let us come home. Come on, come home. And if I haven't said so, and I think I did, my name is Sheila Rollins. Okay, and so basically, this is the pursuit to Christ. Okay, so remember, check me out if you want the full spiel of this little ch Sabbath chat. Um, check me out in the description is all my information there for the, the sermon that I'm going to be giving today at Boardwalk Fellowship. You know, so like I said, if you don't get it live, then you can get the replay. So, okay, so let's go on. So, okay, it says nor revilers. Now I looked up revilers and it says basically of those that abuse others. You know, maybe they beating them up. Maybe they, they talking to them crazy, you know, but they, they, threaten people like bullies bullies and trust me when i tell you there's church bullies too they call them um cliques 
Those are church bullies. They try to tell you what to wear, how to wear it, who to have at your, at your house that you pay mortgage for, that God blesses you to pay more, who to have in your car, who to invite to your functions, and all kinds of craziness, okay? Um, you know, so basically, or then they, they tell other people don't hang around with you and stuff and, and kind of force you to be marginalized and ostracized and all those kind of things. It's church bullies, y'all. So, okay, and then it says extortioners. Now, an extortioner is, you know, one that gathers their possession basically by bribing others, you know, or threatening others, you know, or that kind of thing. Um, but the Bible says, these shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven, okay? And so basically, the life that we want is hid in the life of Christ. So even though, he went through a hard time in his life. That was only a portion of his life. Before that, he was living it up. You know, he lived his life in harmony. He lived his life so well, he didn't need to be married. You know, and a lot of times we feel incomplete if we're not married. But however, because of Christ's relationship with God, he was totally complete. You know, and so basically, while people look to be, get married to raise their self-esteem, the Bible says it ain't going to be none of that in heaven. Read the word. It ain't going to be no marrying and giving and marrying in heaven. That's what people talk about. You know, the only reason why I talk is about because God said he has a husband for me, which I didn't want. But I'm going to accept it because I feel that it's what God wants for me. You know, and so, like I said, if you accept Christ as your personal savior, comment down below in the comment section if you accepted him. You know, don't worry about what's going to happen next. Just accept him and acknowledge him in everything. Give thanks for where you are in your life right now. Because in giving thanks, you're going to piss Satan off. Give thanks. Pray without ceasing and ask Jesus. You don't have to do a long prayer. A lot of what I do is Jesus, 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 help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. That's what I do. I'm not lying to you. And Jesus has helped me to overcome a lot in my life. You know, so I bid you to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. And when you do, pray that God will direct you to a church where he wants you to be. You know, the information that I leave for you in the comp in the description, you know, you can visit church there every Sabbath and the time is there at 11 o'clock is Sabbath school and 12 o'clock is regular worship, okay? Um, and there's other churches, you know, and I'll put maybe another one or two in the, de in the description as well. So, okay, so look, I love you and basically, this is all that I have for you. So remember, there's a war going on for your soul. Don't be fooled. Jesus is the only name given among men whereby we can be seen. Choosing before it's too late.